All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is October 28th, 2018. And as you guys, we are watching and waiting and praying. And guys, we know we are close. We are so close. I'm going to show you some things today. A little bit more. We're going to go, of course, as we always do, with Scripture backed by Scripture. Guys, we're, we're right at the door. I'm going to show you an article from <clears throat> excuse me two articles and one clip of a video and i'd recommend subscribing to this uh to this news channel uh out of israel i don't know if this guy is independent or what but he's really good it looks very it looks like a news station to be honest with you um really good information to get from uh from israel and things that are going on that we just don't hear over here so you'll see who he is but um yeah so i'm gonna have two a news article a video and a news article, and they're day after day after day, the 25th, the 26th, the 27th, all of October, all right? You're going to see that we are close. I believe it's even possible that Trump is literally going to push forward this peace deal uh, before the midterms. He might be nervous and concerned about the about the, uh, the the convoy coming up and having all those guards at the at the border, right? He may be concerned about losing ground on midterms. And if that's the case, because remember, if these guys, if they lose ground at midterms, everything Trump's been accomplishing slows down. So what better thing than to release the the Middle East peace plan? Right? Whether everybody is fully backed in it or not, he's got support of those surrounding Arab nations, especially to the south and you know east, south, and west, right? So the there's a good possibility, right? We all know, guys. We know that we know that we know. And we gotta remind we gotta remind ourselves when we're watching other people's channels and these people saying, Oh, I had a, a vision or a dream, you know, I'm, like I said before, I'm not against them. Right, Because the Lord said people are going to have them. I know people have had them. There's no doubt about it. But all of these people, you know, Byron Seal, for example, repeating the same things over and over and over again. You can't say that you've heard from the Lord, that the Lord spoke to you, and then something didn't happen when you said it would, and then say that you're still hearing from the Lord. That just, it doesn't work like that, guys. So we have to be careful when we're listening to these people and figure out what we're discerning. All right? So <clears throat> I'm not saying these people always never hear. That's not what I'm saying. I just wanted to make a point that we have to we have to pay attention. And when it comes to dreams or visions and people say that they hear from the Lord, the Lord told me this, the Lord told me that, we have to ask the question, what does somebody mean when they say they heard from the Lord? Oh, well, just my mind inside, you know, I felt, that's what I get. You know, just myself and my self-talk, I feel that that's what the Lord's leading me. Well, that's what people should say, right? Not if I, I was looking and I turned the corner and I saw this license plate and, I mean, come on, right, guys? It's just not how it works. You can't say, I heard from the Lord, the Lord's trying to tell me. No, did you literally hear the voice of the Lord? Then please clarify and let us know that you heard from the voice of the Lord. You heard his voice. Now I'd be like, all right, let's 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 listen to what you have to say. All right? But other than that, it's it's a sense, you know, I feel the Lord is leading me this way. That's what people need to say. All right? And I didn't mean to go down ranting down that one, but we have to be careful of these things. Even, I don't, don't get me wrong, I've been caught in these things all the time as well. But we got to stop and remind ourselves, what do we know? This is an end time channel. This channel is revealing end time understanding as we've never understood it before. Go watch the videos if you don't believe me, right? But most people listening now have been listening for a while. We get it. We know something's going on here. And for those that are new, you need to go listen to the three-part series called Operation 14 Years to get a sense and an understanding of where we're at and what we're talking about. So, you know, we have to bring ourselves back and say, well, wait a second. Is it going to happen at any moment? No. We know better than that now. Is it going to just be, uh, is it the rapture? Well, no, it's not the rapture. It's the like a rapture. It's the escape of the bride, right? The church is here for seven years. That's why you must understand 14 years. 
But what do we know comes first? And even the people that talk about, um, you know, the rapture potentially coming or I, I, I feel the rapture is coming at this day. Here's the thing. We are first told there's going to be a peace and safety. All right. It doesn't get any clearer than that. There, I've showed it in so many different scriptures. It is peace and safety before a group goes. All right. This one's really good here as well. See the Lord, uh, Jeremiah 4, 9 and 10. And it shall come to pass at that day, saith the Lord, that the heart of the king shall perish and the heart of the princes and the priests shall be astonished and the prophets shall wonder. Then said I, ah, like, oh, Lord God, surely thou hast greatly deceived. Remember, we were like, what? But we know that somebody went out to do that, right? An angel went out to do that for the Lord before. Deceived. So thou hast greatly deceived this people and Jerusalem, saying, you shall have peace, whereas the sword reacheth into the soul. Right? We've covered it from so many different places. We can go down to Acts 15. Acts 15 is talking about the year 2018. We've shown it many times. Right? It, things that have happened already in 2018. Right? We're just waiting for more to continue to play out. Guys, it's... We're waiting on peace and safety. All right? There is no escape of the bride or quote-unquote rapture until we get this peace plan. Without it, don't be looking for anything yet. I mean, of course, be looking. But don't expect anything until we get this peace and safety deal. Period. And from there, how much time do we have? I believe that is our 40 days. All right. What are we going to see? How are we going to see something? Are, are the angels going to appear to the bride people first or, or to those that are to be prophets first and then go around and telling people to wake up, wake up, wake up? I, I don't know. But we have shown many times that there's an understanding of 40 days. Right. How many times from Genesis to Revelation is there a 40 day something? There's 40 days. There's 40 years. Right. Sometimes when we read days, it means years. Sometimes when we read days, uh, years, it means days, right? Sometimes it means a thousand. We have to discern these things. <clears throat> but there is definitely a 40-day something warning that comes from that peace and safety. Now, I believe during that time, there is going to be, and we're going to talk about these things, There, the earth-shaking events, we're not going to talk so much about that, but I believe within those 40 days, there is going to be major, major earth-shaking events around the world. Uh, focused particularly in uh, America. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not the one that completely rips America in half yet. That won't be, I believe, till 2024. Well, we know it'll be 2024. So we're going to cover some things that are going to show even more evidence that it is going to be 2018. Let me... uh wanted to bring this up. We've talked about this before. I've shown it many times. There is a Bible. So this guy, Steve Weirts, uh was revealed an understanding that he calls the Bible countdown calendar. And what he did is he continued the understanding we knew of Psalms back in the 80s and how a Psalm, the 19th book of the Bible, and you go to Psalms, which is the 19th book in the Old Testament, chapter 1, so you're 1901, right? So you're 1901. And there was this correlation that was found with psalms to years so years to chapters in psalms and it carries forward just like psalms 118 is the year 19 and then add the 18 so you've hit uh 2000 right 99 uh, psalms 99 you hit psalms 100 is the year 2000 and then so on and so forth where psalms 18 19 20 right psalms 118 119 120 they equal 2018, 2019, and we've revealed that here on this channel, how perfectly it works. Well, he carried this understanding forward into the New Testament, and it turned out that 2011, because the, the entire timeline of the end is actually 21 years, with the 22nd year being the Jubilee, which is the 32 to the year 2033. All right, a year goes from spring to spring. 
So here we have John 1. John reveals the last 21 years. So there are clues and things hidden within the book of John that are the last 21 years. All right. The first seven is the Holy Spirit working for the bride. The bride gets taken out and then it's the church time for those that were left behind. Then the church gets raptured. Then the seven years of trumpets. All right. Seven, seven and seven. When we follow this along on how the count continued throughout the whole book, look what we see. 2011, 111, 12, 13, 114, 115, and see, 118 equals 2018, all the way down, right? 131 to 132, and remember, a year is from 31, 30 to 31, 31 to 32, right? 32 into 33, because a year goes from spring to spring, all right? And you could see how they all line up. Well, he didn't pre-plan this. It was an understanding as he was trying to figure out if something continued as Psalms 19 did. And it was re the understanding was revealed to the guy. And we have gone through this many, many times in these, in these scriptures to prove those final seven, seven, and seven years. And we are right here right now. All right? Spring to spring. And we're going to show that this year is the year. We're going to show other things in the Old Testament that line up with the New Testament and go back and forth with these things that we've been taught, right? That we've been showing here on this channel. And this, again, I was doing a study. I've got some other windows open up here and a video here of Kim Clement. This is a pretty wild one right here. Kim Clement, Prophecy of America, a woman named Esther is what he called it. I'm not sure about this woman named Esther, but when you guys see that video, when I do it in a, in a future one, it's pretty wild. But while I was studying, look at this. I was studying 1 Kings 10, 2 Chronicles 9, and then Luke and Matthew regarding the woman of the south. Well, I have one of our sisters in Christ, Tabitha, who sends me this info on 1 <laughs> Kings and 2 Chronicles. And I'm like, what the heck are the chances of that? But what she was looking at, what she noticed, wasn't what I was studying. It's just the way the Lord works, right? And he sends it to me, and I was like, I was, I'm like, I was already in those books. Literally in those books, two chapters away, in both cases. So she shows me something, and I, of course, I get this little nudge, and I, I'm like, okay, I got to go look into it. So that's really what we're going to spend our time in today. But I want to show you some things here with the timing of events and the fact that it looks like, excuse me, got to drink some eggnog latte while it's still warm. So it looks like Trump may be revealing this peace deal before the midterms. Okay? So look at this. This is from October 25th, 2018. Trump envoy to visit Israel next week for talks on peace plan. Next week is what? This week. All right? Watch this one. So to visit regarding talks, and apparently, let's not forget, we heard that there was uh, one of the billionaires uh, of, out of America that went to go meet with, with, um, with uh, Mahmoud Abbas as well. And the, I think America, the, the White House is denying that they sent them, um, but I'm sure there, there's a connection there as well. So now let's follow this. Let's watch this video. Sorry, give me a second. I'm going to show you. We're just going to watch a few seconds of this video. Um, and I'm going to show you what else is happening. This is uh, the 26th. So this was the 25th. This came out on the 26th. Israel and the Islamist Hamas organization have reportedly reached an understanding regarding a long-term ceasefire arrangement, according to which there will be a gradual easing of the Gaza blockade, in exchange for an end of all forms of violence emanating from the Palestinian enclave. According to informed sources that were quoted by the London-based Al Khayat Daily, Egypt managed to motivate Hamas to end, among others, a weekly Palestinian campaign of violent protests along the Gaza border fence with Israel, as well as the use of incendiary kites and balloons, which have burned thousands of acres across southern Israel. While TV7 was not able to confirm this report, which was broadly covered by Israeli and international media outlets, 
A statement by Israeli Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman may have pointed to its possible validity. According to the top defense official, the Palestinian protests along the southern Israeli border with the Gaza Strip are expected to pass more quietly. Lieberman, however, did not confirm nor deny any Egyptian-mediated arrangement with the terror organizations in Gaza. That All right. So you see that? One day where we see talk of them going and what channel or what uh, website are we on? Times of Israel. All right. Going to meet with them next week. Then what do we see? We see Israel and Hamas reaching a long-term ceasefire agreement. Right in time. What on earth would Hamas be doing putting everything at ease if they don't get if they're not getting something that they want? Right? There's movement taking place. So twenty fifth, twenty sixth, let's see yesterday. See, October twenty seventh. US to reveal <laughs> our favorite little phrase the deal of the century to Israel next week. See, very, very appropriate in its timing, right? <clears throat> you can see the different things that are reporting it. Um, you know, U.S. President Donald Trump, Donald Trump's envoy to the Middle East, Jason Greenblatt, is scheduled to travel to the region to meet with Israel officials and reveal the details of the U.S. plan. All right, the so-called deal of the century guys we've covered this on this channel this whole thing of this understanding of deal of the century is wild you know revealed potentially possibly in in a movie from 1983 what was 1983 the last jubilee year when the last peace deal came in all right just it's wild we're not in a jubilee year remember that but remember just like what we're going to show today, forward and then backwards, right? The, the Bible moving forward from the from the beginning to the end, from the end to the beginning, right? People have been talking about that recently with the menorah going forward and everything, go, and then from the back going forward, and it leads to the branch in the middle, right? We know that the Bible has Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, so on and so forth, but you go into the discourses and you go into the Gospels and you have Luke, Mark, Matthew, right luke the church mark the 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 lost tribes right the church that's left behind and then judah is matthew right those who are going to go first those who go second and those who are here at the return you see what i mean so i think there's something to this forward and going backwards and we're going to see that even today <clears throat> excuse me when we go into uh first kings and second chronicles <clears throat> sorry give me one second all right, so we'll see that again today. It's repeated many, many, many times. So you can see there's something going on. We've got the 25th, the 26th, and the 27th. And that movie, crazy as it sounds, that movie called Deal of the Century from 1983 came out November 4th. I just find it really interesting. If you guys haven't watched that movie, if you ever watched it or if you have watched it, the stuff in there is just really unbelievable to the times that we're talking about. And it came out November 4th. And when are the midterm elections? You know, if the midterm elections are November 4th, for example, I'm not saying he's going to release it right on November 4th. That wouldn't make any sense, right? Uh, let me see here. <clears throat> I'm just doing a quick search. Uh, U.S. midterm elections. Okay, help. You know what? So they're going to be for you guys in the U.S. Your midterm elections are November 6th, uh, if I'm reading this correctly. So, yeah, November 6th are your midterm. So is it possible? Let's have, <laughs> let's have a look at this. Is it possible that Trump could release... The deal of the century on the 4th? Guys, I'm telling you, if he releases it on the 4th, I mean, regardless of when he releases it, it's going to be an exciting time in uh, on Earth, all right? Everything's going to change. But wouldn't that be interesting if, it, if he actually released the deal of the century 
on the 4th, just like the release of the movie. I mean, it, it would be pretty crazy. So I'm just saying this to say, watch out, guys. Pay attention because it's about to happen. And what is that? what's going to be followed with it? Things are going to start breaking out around the world, including the Earth, uh, and I think especially in America. All right? Now, I want to show you guys something. Let's go into Luke 21. We've touched on this uh, a couple times before, but I don't know if we really touched on it too much. See, in Luke 20, in Luke's discourse, he doesn't have, <clears throat> excuse me, he doesn't have, uh, uh, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, Mark has that, <clears throat> excuse me, and Matthew has that. We've spoken about that before. And what did it lead us into? It led us into the understanding that Mark says, standing where it ought not, right? Let's show you that real quick. Because it's going to lead into what we're talking about today and what more gets revealed here today. All right. So the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not. Let the reader understand. Let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. All right. When we go into Matthew, we see it spoken of slightly differently. Again, because this is during the time of trumpets. All right. It's during the time of Jacob's trouble. The seals are not Jacob's trouble. All right. So it says, uh, abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place. This is going to be the temple that is built for the Lord, right? In the proper place. That's why it's standing in the holy place, all right? We've covered this to show that that is when the Lord returns on Mount Zion, not feet down on Mount of Olives at the end of it all in the year 2031, 32, all right? This is when he comes on Mount Zion, right? He's going to come probably sometime even 23, 24. There might be something seen in 2024, sorry. But 2025 is when he's going to be established. The 144,000 will have been sealed. They're going to be now on Mount Zion with the Lamb. Nobody's ever asked, well, why do we see the Lamb on Mount Zion with the 144,000? Because the Lamb has returned on Mount Zion. And he's brought the 144,000 there and they're teaching and they're about to go out and do their work. All right. So we've talked about this before and how there are going to be still two temples built. The first one in Mark, I believe, is the one that, well, I'm positive. It's the one that's going to be built on the Temple Mount that the Lord calls standing where it ought not. And then we have Matthew's that says stand in the holy place and i believe this one is going to be built uh in the city of david though only two places there's an argument as to where the the temple was built <clears throat> excuse me and i believe it's because the first one that david built was in the city of david and the second one was built on mount zion so what are we seeing here again or sorry not mount zion on uh the temple mount so what are we seeing Again, forward, backward, right? It was City of David, Temple Mount. It's going to be Temple Mount, City of David. All right? Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we read it. It's Luke, Mark, Matthew going back, right? Menorah going forward, back of Menorah going backward, right? Everything pointing to the middle branch, okay? So why am I bringing this up? Well, you're going to see when we get into... Um, Second Chronicles and uh, First Kings. Okay, but what we look here when we see in Matthew. Oh, and you know what? There's even a relation. Let me show you this real quick. There's a relation to what we're going to be talking about when it says, um, "Let them which be on the housetop not come down." There's a reason why. What are they doing on their housetop? What What is Israel doing on their housetop? Right? They don't only do this on their housetop, but they do it also on their housetop. They do it in many places, and I can show you even in uh, in Nehemiah. Right? What are they doing on their housetop? Nehemiah 8.16. So the people, so see, to make booths, because it's talking about tabernacles. So when they went forth and brought them and made themselves booths, everyone upon the roof of his house 
and in the courts of the streets and so on and so forth. But you see upon the, the courts of the roof of their house, and that's why I bring that up. Do I think it's something that applies to us right now? No, of course not. This is something speaking to Judah in a later time, and that's why we don't see it in Luke as well. In Luke's discourse, there's nothing about those that be on the rooftops because Luke is speaking about the beginning events. Luke is speaking about the stuff for the bride of Christ. All right? He does have things in there when you see, and he said unto them. Right? That lets us know, those that have been around for a while, know that then said he unto them. This is Luke inter interjecting and saying in his words, then Jesus said unto Mark and Matthew. All right? This is not going to apply to the bride of Christ. Nation shall rise against nation. All right? Red horse rider time. Nation shall rise against nation. Why? Because peace is taken from the earth. All right? So when we read here in Luke, <clears throat> we don't have, um, as Daniel said, right? We don't have on the rooftops. Okay? So let's see what we're reading here. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. It is near. All right? It is near. Because the, the, the bride isn't going to see the destruction of it. And let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. See, nothing about being on the rooftops. Just those that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Okay? And let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not anybody from the other countries excuse me, come and enter into it. Why? Because Israel, Jerusalem, is about to get surrounded. And I believe what's going to happen is during that 40-day warning time and these earth-shaking events and these things are going on, uh, it's during that time that Israel is going to get surrounded. I was talking to my wife about it last night, and I was saying that if you think about it, when the peace deal is announced, what ends up happening? The peace deal is announced within X amount of time, I, maybe even within 24 hours, right? We see suddenly, right? We see suddenly down here in Luke. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with the suffering of this world and the drunkenness and cares of this life. So that day comes upon you unawares. What does that mean? That means we're going to be here to experience that day. Right? When it begins. Okay? So, when it's declared, when it's, when it, yeah, when it's declared, the peace deal, is it within 24 hours that, that it happens? I don't know. Maybe that you're going to see these earth-shaking events and major things coming upon America, different parts of the world, but especially upon America. Because doesn't it make sense if America is the greatest friend in the world of the U.S., or sorry, uh, America is the greatest friend to Israel in the world. Why, when they're visibly compassed by armies, is America not there helping them? When they're visibly compassed by armies, so much so that the people in Judea understand to flee, and maybe not everybody will, obviously, but a number of them understand to flee, it has to be pretty obvious that they're seeing that that the nation is surrounded. And why isn't America there? Right? Because America is probably going to be dealing with things at home. All right? But not an attack yet. The attack will happen once we're gone. Now, how do we know this applies to this time that we're talking about? For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Meaning what? The end time events hadn't started yet. This is your kickoff event to the tribulation beginning. Yes, there's going to be the earth shaking things. There's that 40 day warning. Remember, people could have been watching and praying and waiting for 30, 40 years, some of our brothers and sisters in Christ. But within those 40 days, there's going to be a bunch of people coming to Christ as well that will be part of the bride found accounted worthy. Right. I, I give this story like a, a friend of mine who was digging out a basement for his house. There was no basement in his house. And we generally have basements up here. We always do. 
but in his old neighborhood, they didn't have basements. And so what he did, this guy does all sorts of things, uh, really just interesting things. Well, he was digging it out. He went down to the street corner and he would pick up guys down in, in Workman's Corner and he would bring them and, and pay these guys X amount of dollars per hour to go in with buckets and dig out the dirt from his basement. And I was telling my wife when I read that story, because <clears throat> there's a parable of it, similar, that, you know, those guys were working all day. They accepted the wage that they got. And then he needed more guys because he wanted to get it done at a certain time. So he goes back, grabs a couple more guys, says he'll pay them the same thing so that they'll work hard, right? So they can be done that day. Goes in, grabs more guys. He's paying everybody at the end of the day. And they're like, well, why are these guys getting paid the same as us? We were here the whole day. Right? And the owner of the land, just like in the parable, well, you were happy with your deal. We made this deal. Everybody was in agreement. It was great. You guys were happy to work. I needed these guys to make sure we can get it done today. I needed it done, right? So that's why they got paid the same. They're still going to be rewarded with being found accounted worthy. There's going to be a lot of people. Now, now a billion people know it's not rapture time. It's escape time. We know that it's only about 2% of the world population that's going in the escape. All right? I've proven it. I, I've shown it many different ways now. I believe it's 2%, and I think it, it's, it's going to be about 2%, all right? A little bit less. So there's many people during those 40 days that are going to come to believe in Christ with these events and these earth-shaking things that start to take place, that'll bring a lot of people to Christ. And we can see why, because these are the beginnings. See? For these be the days that vengeance of all things which are written may be fulfilled. You see, that's why we see this down here in Luke. This is one of our favorite ones, right? 2136. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape what? All these things. See that? That's exactly what it's talking about right here. To escape all these things that are about to begin. And we're going to see Jerusalem surrounded. Okay? Now, where is a confirming one for that? Watch this. In Ezekiel 4... In Ezekiel 4, watch this. This is talking about, see, the siege of Jerusalem symbolized. And it's talking about go and, and you know, there's battering rams. And then here, we'll read from, uh, we'll read verse, uh, so Ezekiel 4, verse 3. Moreover, take thou unto thee an iron pan and set it for a wall of iron between you and the city. And set your face against it, against the city, and it shall be besieged. And thou shalt lay siege against it. Look at this. This shall be a sign to the house of Israel. A sign of what? When they get besieged. This is the sign to the house of Israel. Who is the house of Israel? The lost tribes. The tribes Jesus came for. The, the remaining church. You see that? The bride is a piece of everybody. Jews and Gentiles alike. The house of Israel are those during the seals, what we call and many understand as the church. These are the left behind from the church that were sleeping, that weren't ready, that hadn't been praying and watching, they hadn't been repentant and obedient, right? Spending time with the Lord, giving them thanks. None of these things are works. They just show that you belong to them, you love them, right? These are not works. Works are your rewards once you get to heaven, all right? Like you guys sending me this information. Us doing what we're doing on this channel. We're, we're giving up everything. We're broke and we do this stuff because we know it's going to make a difference. We know it matters. We know it's important because people don't understand this stuff. All right? This is a sign to them. What is? The fact that they're surrounded? No. That they get besieged. 
When is this going to happen? In 2018. We've shown it many, many times. It is 2018. That's exactly what is being spoken about. All right? Where we, the bride, are going to see them compassed about. I think late in the 40 days, and at the end of the 40 days is when they get attacked. Well, how many times do we have to go through this, right? My, one of my favorites, Zechariah. Zechariah lays out the timing of everything for us. Right? Walk to and fro. Da, 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 da. Look. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long will thou not have mercy on Jerusalem? It's like, well, that doesn't seem to make sense. Doesn't he have mercy on Jerusalem right now? No, he's talking about the land. Right? They're not being obedient. They don't even know the Savior. Right? There are crazy, wicked things going on beneath Jerusalem and beneath Israel. Right? Not all the people. Don't. That's not what I'm saying. We've got brothers and sisters over there that are Jewish Christians. Right? And then we've got the people themselves that, that we love and that we support and that we pray for. Right? But it's what is going on in the dark corners. There's some crazy stuff going on over there. So see, the angel of the Lord is, how long before you'll have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah, against which thou hast had indignation? The Lord's been pissed off with Jerusalem for the last 70 years. And it's going to end. I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with great jealousy. I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. What's that mean? Quiet rest, which means peace and secure. Peace and safety. For I was a little displeased, but they helped forward the tribulation. Get it? In the 70th year, it is going to happen. And here we have Trump. We have January, uh, October 25th. We have October 26th. We have October 27th. It is building, building, and building, and I believe Trump may be concerned with those people coming up the border. All right? He may be concerned with that distraction and wants to make sure that he's got his base of Christians going to the polls for those midterms for him. Okay? And I can't see what my time is here, guys, so I'm just going to have to keep going. <laughs> I'm no, I know I've got more time than uh, a lot more time left, but I just wanted to make a point. All right. Now watch this. Let's go into Second Chronicles. Okay, we're going to go into Second Chronicles and First Kings. Second Chronicles. Second uh, Chronicles, chapter seven. All right. Listen to what we have here. Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verse eight. And remember, guys, this happens all the time, right? We need to discern when we see the same story spoken of twice. What is it trying to tell us? Right? There is an end time understanding of one that applies in one area and one that applies in another area. All right? Just like, um, uh, was it with Second Samuel to Psalms 18? Right? It's the same thing when uh, our brother in Christ from Saudi Arabia had sent me the, the question about it. I mean, Tabitha has done the same many times. We've done videos based on a question or something she was showing me, and I delve into it a little bit more, and then we've got a whole video uh, revealed of greater understanding about it. All right? So watch this. Look at how many times it says seven days, and then wait till you see Second Kings. It's going to reveal greater understanding, guys, about the two temples. Okay? There might be something for us, too, right here but i think it relates more so to the timing of the uh of the temple being built all right so let's read what it says also at the same time solomon kept the feast seven days remember seven days or seven years in our in the end time understanding and all israel with him very a very great congregation from the entering in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt. See, catch these little differences. Kept seven days is in this portion. 
and in the eighth day, in it. What do we know about in the eighth day for the bride? Right? We know that from the Mount Transfiguration. Right? In Luke's discourse, uh, in Luke's in Luke's book, we have at the Mount Transfiguration, it says, and about an eighth day. All right? Whereas in Mark and in Matthew, it says after six days and after six days. Why? Because that's the time of their rapture. After six years and after six years. The seventh is rest. The seventh is rest. But with the, the bride, it is in the eighth day, in the eighth year, which is where we're at. We're currently there right now. You think of, uh, of 2011, like I showed you guys earlier. If you go from spring to spring, we're now in that building up to the eighth, right? We're, we're past the seven. We're in the seven, and we haven't reached the number eight for the eighth year yet, but we are in it, all right? So let's see here. And in the eighth day, they made a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days, comma, and, meaning a separate thing, the feast seven days. Seven, seven, seven. Twenty-one years. All right? What do we have? Seven days and in the eighth. This is the conversation you get for the bride. Seven days and in the eighth. A solemn assembly. Where do we get the understanding of a solemn assembly? All right? It says a festival or holiday. All right? <clears throat> Watch what a sol. Where do we get a solemn assembly as well? Watch this. A solemn assembly comes from Feast of Tabernacles, booths. Right? For seven days unto the Lord. Seven days you shall make an offering. Uh, on the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. You shall make an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly. And I'm still curious, guys, as to whether we may, right? I know, I know um, on the Hebrew calendar and what the Jews believe that it was already like this 2019 right in the year that they're in right now that for them started in the fall on their civil calendar i they believe that uh, 2019 is going to be the the second adar year I, I i'm just not i'm not sure you know i think it might be this year and we might be looking at a, a couple days from now you know or 3 4 days from now but you know it's just really hard to say what we do know is what we need that peace deal all right the peace deal a period of time of i believe 40 days and then the escape of the bride because there's going to be people coming in during those 40 days all right so we've got a solemn assembly telling us that time frame i mean just if we follow this guys seven days and in the eighth saw at the solemn assembly all right first seven years and in the eighth where we're at right now solemn assembly feast of tabernacles exactly what the the um luke's mount transfiguration says about an eighth day and then it talks about peter saying should we build tabernacles should we build booths for the three of you right same same setup same same alignment of understanding for they kept the dedication of the altar right the sacrifice seven days come and the feast seven days watch this this gets pretty awesome on the three so on the 23rd day of the seventh month all right so if it's not a second adar or sorry if this year was a second adar year then what do we get just to just i'm not saying this is it because i'm telling you we need that peace and safety but what happens if everything was pushed back a month right so that tishri is where we're talking about with shivan it puts us at what november 1st 23rd day of shivan if it was forward everything a month 
because of the second Adar, it would be the 23rd day of the seventh month. All right? So if 23rd day of the seventh month, he sent the people away to their tents, glad and merry in heart for the goodness of the Lord had showed unto David, that the Lord had showed unto David and to Solomon. All right, this is why I don't believe this is to us right now. This is talking about what? Tabernacles, right? This tabernacles is talking about what? A time when the temple is built, right? When the temple is built. And what does he do? Sent the people away to what? Their tents. Tabernacles. And the Lord was happy with what? David and Solomon. You're going to see how this connects, guys, when we get into the next one. Thus finished, thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord. Hello? Finished the house of the Lord. And then what? These guys are sent out. When he finishes the, the house of the Lord, what did he do? These guys were sent out at tabernacles. Did you, did you catch that? They were sent out at tabernacles. Tabernacles is booths. What do they do at booths? When you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not. Remember I said in Solomon's? Right? You saw praises for Daniel and Solomon. You're going to see a difference here in a minute. Let the reader understand that him that be in Judea flee into the mountains and let him that be on his housetop. What are they doing on their housetop? Tabernacles. Booths. This is their fleeing time. When are they going to flee? Do you see these connections, guys? It's so awesome. All right. So when do they flee? At tabernacles. So he's now finishing and completing the house. And what do we see? And the Lord appeared unto Solomon that uh, by night and said unto him, I heard thy prayer. Guys, this is awesome. <laughs> it's so awesome. I heard thy prayer and have chosen this place for myself for a house of sacrifice. Hello. Do you guys get it? For a slaughter of the flesh. Do you get it? Remember what we were teaching with the two temples? They're going to build that first one in the wrong place. Just like we read in Mark, standing where it ought not. And I told you it's going to be where Solomon had built his, which is on the Temple Mount. How are they going to get away with building it there? Easy because it's about to get destroyed, first of all. Israel's about to get attacked. And when everything settles down, they're going to go back in and they're going to start rebuilding the city of the streets. It's like Daniel 9 times 2. Everything happens twice. Right? That Christy girl, she said that in one of her videos and I went, oh my goodness, she has no idea what she said. I left her a message to let her know. And I, she, from things I've seen a little bit here and there, a minute or two, she, she still hasn't understood what she said. Everything happens twice. Exactly the same way? No, but essentially the same way. What about in the past? Think about it. David's temple. Solomon's temple. Now I've been telling you it's going to be Solomon's temple. And then David's temple. And the first one, which is Solomon's, which is why you see David is being praised too, because his father, David first, and then also Solomon. And it tells them when they're going to be sent away, when they should what? Flee into the mountains. Because the one who steps into that place, standing where he ought not, right? Standing where it should not. The one who is in there, that creates that first abomination of desolation. Who is who? The Antichrist. I believe um, MBS, right? The Saudi prince. 
We've covered a lot about him being 33 years old. That's not the key, but isn't that interesting? Being 33 years old. All right? He's not going to be 33 when he steps in there, obviously, but at 33 years old. All right? Currently. In all of those things, we've covered about that prince. It's pretty wild. It's essentially Daniel, what was it? Daniel 11 is talking about Saudi Arabia. How we showed, oh, wasn't that unbelievable, guys? In that last video, if they say in the desert, go not. Where's Saudi Arabia? In the desert. And if they say he's in the secret chamber, go not. And the secret chamber means an oriental place, right? An oriental house, right? Cain means Cain, which means from the of the oriental tribe. When Cain left the Garden of Eden, he went east. Satan is coming from China. And my wife is convinced that he's coming out of the Forbidden City when he comes. All right? Yes, Rome is still involved. Rome is going to be the, is the false prophet. All right? I don't have greater understanding in that one yet, but I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. But look at this, guys. <laughs> what did the Lord say he's going to use Solomon's for? A house of sacrifice. This is why flee. Flee, it says in Mark. When you see the abomination, get out of there. Because what? It is the time of sacrifices. Right? What did I show you guys? Right in here. Give me a second. It's just bringing up. Come on. All right. When? About three and a half years into it. Three, three and a half years into it. That temple is going to be built. And the first beast is going to be given his power to continue 42 months. And the beheadings and everything begin. Which is why you see what at the fifth one? The martyrs exactly what it's telling us exactly the timeline I've been showing and we're gonna show you this timeline too. the trumpets timeline the other seven years all right I just uh, guys <laughs> I love it I get so excited being able to, to understand and to show you guys these connections it's so it's so awesome now if this only happened once and this story was only spoken about once I wouldn't really know what to tell you if there was no other connection, right? I may not have seen a connection. <laughs> Look, you got seven, seven, and seven. Interesting, eh? Well, get ready. <laughs> Watch First Kings. Remember, backward. Chronicles, we're going into Kings. Watch First Kings uh, 8, I think it is. Yeah, First Kings 8, the last two chapters. Thank you so much, Sister Tabitha. Another great revelation from your from your digging. All right. And you guys, again, who else? Keith and I know Rick and Rich. And, man, I don't want to name everybody because there's names I, I can't say uh, for for safety reasons. But there, there are people that watch our videos and comment sometimes. And, um, you know, you guys send me this information. You guys are the ones that sent me some of these links uh, to this peace plan and deal of the century and so forth, right? It's, we're so close, guys. So here, watch this. 1 Kings 8, 65. It's 65 and 66, and then we'll go into 1 Kings 9 in the first couple chapters, uh, verses. And at that time, Solomon held. Remember I said we should look at that? Watch this here. I'll show you right here just for the fun of it. Oh, It's on a pause. Watch. So see, I did a side-by-side -side with them. Just so you can see some of the changes, just real quick, some of the differences. And then I'll go back because, of course, I always like to go into the word definitions for you guys. But watch this. See, this is the first one we read. And this is the second one at Kings, okay? Also at that time, Solomon kept, right? At that time, Solomon held the feast. And then you had what? Seven days. You have no seven days over here. You have very great congregation. You have just a great congregation here. Okay, so you have a seven here that's added that First Kings doesn't have. There's there's a lot of differences that you can see. Okay, so let's read it. And at that time, Solomon held a feast, 
and all Israel with them, a great congregation from the entering in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt before the Lord our God seven days. Oh, there's no comma, is there? <laughs> Told you guys, there's there's scripture understanding to the fact whether there's a comma and, no comma, no and, just a comma. There's reasons, guys. In the original, it didn't have these things. I get it, but the Lord knew in the translations. You must stick with the King James for greater understanding, all right? So, before the Lord God, even uh, seven days and seven days, even <laughs> 14 days, seven years, seven years, even 14 years. All right. Well, what does this mean? Before. Before the Lord, seven days. Before his face. Well, what does that mean? Let's have a look. All right. Before the Lord. Where have we talked about this before, guys? For those who have been following for a while. Remember, two books in, two books in the Old Testament have 14 years in them. Both of them relate to the last 14 years of the tribulation. The seals and the great tribulation, which is the sixth seal, and then into trumpets. Okay? The last 14 years to the year 31-32, right here. All right? The last 14 years. This is 2018 into 19, 20, no, sorry, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. What year is 2024? The year of the rapture. The year of the 144,000 being sealed. The year of the rapture. And the year what? The year that the Lord is going to be returning to Mount Zion. The year 2025 is when he establishes himself there upon Mount Zion, which I believe is going to be in the clouds. All right? Now watch. If this is 2024 and the year of the rapture, let's see what we see. They are before my face. Same word. Now let's get it. Let's say, okay, well, that's just by chance. It just so happens it's in Hosea right at the right year in the year 24. All right, in the year 2024. Well, let's see where else we can confirm this for 2024. How about at the sixth seal? Should keep that one darker. How about at the sixth seal? Right? The great earthquake. This is the great earthquake of 2024, where X marks the spot and America is ripped in two. All right? No more will anybody be going to America or anything like that. It's This is where she goes down. All right? And the stars fell from heaven and so on and so forth. And then what do we see? And said to the mountains and to the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of he who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. When? Same time. 2024. All right. Let's go back into this. Where were we? Second Kings. All right. So I got to scroll all the way to the bottom. All right. So there you have this understanding. Where do you see this? Right. Before the Lord and seven days. See, you have the seven days and seven days. So you have the before the Lord, which is connected to this seven days. And then you have the seven days, even 14. And look at this. On the eighth day. Here we go again. On the eighth day, he sent the people away and blessed the king and went into their tents joyful and glad. And the reason I have this purple right here is because everything that we had read, or not everything, but there's a chunk that we had read right here, see? And in the eighth day, on the eighth day, we don't have this part here. Excuse me, and he sent the people away and blessed the king. See? That's way down here. 
and he sent the people away under their tents. So this purple represents the difference of all of this right here compared to right here. It doesn't speak about it. So this is something pertaining, you know, at some point, I, I believe what it's really talking about here is for those, like I said earlier, uh, that are going to be here at the first time when they must flee Judea. All right. At about three, three and a half years into the beginning of the tribulation of seals. All right. There's going to be an escape of the bride that'll have, that'll taken place. War is broken out. All right. They'll be rebuilding that first temple. Right. Solomon's temple in Solomon's place is going to be getting built. And this is their time to flee. We don't see that over here, though. Why don't we see that in Second Kings? Uh, sorry, in the First Kings version. Because it's speaking to a different time. Right? This is on the eighth day, not in the eighth day. And look at this. Uh, joyful and glad for all the goodness that the Lord had done, un had done for David, his servant, and for Israel, the people. The other one also said, and for Israel, the people. Who's missing here this time? Solomon. He does it for David, his servant. Why? Because this one being built is being built in the city of David. Okay, let's go to chapter 9 and continue it. And it came to pass, when Solomon had finished building the temple, uh, the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all of his desires, look, that the Lord appeared unto Solomon, what? Yeah, you read it right there, guys. The second time. The second time. Why the second time in the end time understanding? Because it's the next house that he built. And look at what he says. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplications that thou hast made for me. Remember that? Remember how exciting that one was? had finished the house, and he appeared unto Solomon. I have heard thy prayer, and I have chosen this place for myself for a house of sacrifice. What does he say here? I have heard thy prayers and thy supplications that uh, you have made to me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever, and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Uh, what about sacrifice? No sacrifice taking place in this one. When Satan comes, Satan's going to be destroying it, of course. But no sacrifice taking place in this one. The first one is the place of sacrifice. The first one is the one that is going to be built on the Temple Mount. The second one is going to be built in the city of David. <clears throat> Watch, there's another, right? I was saying there was another piece I wanted to show you with this, and there is. But see, and what does he do? He says, I will place my, uh, to put my name there forever, and it shall be my place perpetually. Well, where do we see that? Where do we just so happen to see the same kind of wording? How about in the book to year, in the chapter to year, at the end of the 14 years, which is what? 2031 into 2032, right? And what does he say? Look at that. I will go into the, his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into thy rest. Thou in the ark of thy strength. Let the priest be clothed with righteousness. This is all at the end. And look at what he says. For thy servant... David's sake. Turn not away the face of thine anointed. The Lord has sworn it unto David. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He hath desired it for his habitation. This is my rest 
forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. For who? Thy servant David's sake. For thy servant David's sake. Doesn't say that here. That he showed unto David and to Solomon. The last one. What does he say? Oops. It is for David his servant. No Solomon mentioned here. For David his servant. And what does he do? He makes it his place forever. Guys, it's incredible. There is a second temple. Uh, sorry, two more temples to come. More evidence revealed to us here in 1 Kings and 2 Chronicles. It's wild, guys. I love this stuff. It just more and more and more and more and more. It even talks about when they need to flee. Isn't that crazy? In both cases, it talks about their time of fleeing to their tents at tabernacles. In both cases, when those temples are about done, the Bible tells them to flee and lets them both know that it's going to be during tabernacles and we can confirm it here with this first abomination of desolation that the Lord said he's going to have for his house of slaughter during the beheading of Christians and killing also of Jews again where they need to flee. There's going to be three fleeing events for Judah. Three. One, at the beginning, when they see Jerusalem surrounded. Second, and then the bride's going to be gone. Second one is when the first temple is built and up and pretty much done and running. It's going to be a place of sacrifice. Flee into Judea at the time of what? Tabernacles. And Matthew, the final time they're going to flee for those who were still there, I think many of them are going to stay in the wilderness that whole time. There may be people end up living in that world in the wilderness, guys, for 14 years. Right? 13, 14 years. They may come out. Things seem more peaceful again. They'll come out. But guys, I'll tell you, during trumpets, pff, man, good luck trying to stay alive. All right? Look. And the last time right here, the third time, when there, when the final temple, the second tribulation temple has been built during trumpets, this is the one that the Lord said he was going to build. I mean, come on. What are you talking about, Alan? This is craziness. Oh, really? Zechariah even tells us in the year 2025, who's here all of a sudden? Remember in Zechariah 1 for the year 18, 2018, it says, he said, I am jealous for Jerusalem. I am jealous for Zion. Look at what he says now. For thus saith the Lord of hosts in the year 2025, the beginning of trumpets when he's now on Mount Zion with the 144,000. He says, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy. I was jealous for her with great fury. Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. And what are they going to be doing? The remnant of the people are coming. They're going to be coming from different countries, from the east and to the west. And what are they going to be doing? Rebuilding the city and the streets for the second time. And he even tells them, look, I didn't come and I couldn't do this for you guys before because what? 
There was nobody available to work because there was what? No peace on the earth. To him that went in and came, uh, that went out and came in because of the affliction that began where? In 2018. When I was very displeased and became sore displeased with them, they helped forward the affliction. By 2025, the affliction's over. Trumpets begins. And while they're rebuilding those city and those streets again, and the temple, see, that the temple might be built, that he's going to dwell in. See? The difference between Second Chronicles and First Kings. Right? Guys, it's revealed. It's and why do we you only see the talk of one being built here in Zechariah? Why? Because Zechariah is the final 14 years from the viewpoint of Judah. Hosea is the viewpoint from the everyone else, if you will. All right? That's what's going on. You're either Jew or Gentile, get it? And if you're part of the bride, then we're all one. We are equal unto the angels, guys. Get ready and be excited. Look at this information that's being laid out. This is insane that we could know this stuff. How on earth can we put this together? All connected as one. Unbelievable. I could tell you stories, guys, on this channel that the majority of you, or just about every one of you, has no idea that happens. And it happens between brothers and sisters in Christ here on this channel. And because it comes through me, of course, I get to see it all. And I, I explain it and I show it to others that are connected to it. It is unbelievable what happens. All right? Is it in here? Yeah, remember this. But they which shall be accounted worthy, the bride of Christ, to obtain that world in the kingdom of God and the resurrection of, de of the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage, neither can they die any more anymore see the first death second death doesn't apply to the bride of christ you see that for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of god guys this should fire you up if we're watching we're praying you know we're, we're repentant we're seeking the lord Right? Of course we're going to... Why do you think we have to repent every day? Because we fall short. We're impatient. We slip into sin. We need to come back for forgiveness. We need to continuously be in forgiveness. It doesn't give us the right to just say, oh, like the church and say the sleeping church, oh, well, I, I've accepted Jesus Christ. I'm good. That's not it, guys. The enemy knows Jesus Christ too. He continues to sin. You see, it's not just about, I believe in Jesus Christ. That's part of it. And I'll tell you something else, actually. You know, in the scriptures, when it says, and those uh, who just call out on my name shall be saved. Do you know where the confusion of that comes from? Because people believe that it applies to everybody right now. It's not. There's an end time understanding to that. It's going to be during the time of tribulation. There's going to be people when they, with all of the devastation, all these things going on around them, and they realize that they've screwed it up, they're going to call out and yell for Jesus Christ to forgive them. And they'll be forgiven. All right? They're going to know, and those that are surviving will still know, will be obedient and understand. It is going to be a completely different time in world history once the tribulation begins. And the supernatural powers and abilities that people have, as we see, like you saw in Second Joel and Second Peter. All right, we did a video on that a long time ago as well. All right, people are going to be called out and be able to receive blessings. Raising people from the dead is going to happen. I think that'll be later on, probably into trumpets, maybe even latent seals. 
All right? Guys, it's all connected. It's all there. Man, God is good, and this is such an exciting time. It's an exciting time to be alive. It's a, it's a, it's a worrisome time to be alive. It's a, you know, just a little bit of everything. It's, it's feeling on edge, and you know, just it's getting so late in the game into the year that you sometimes think, ah, oh, man, Lord, are we missing something? Is it going to be this year? Right? We still have half the year, of course. There's still plenty of time. All right? It's going to be in the 70th. We will not hit the 71st and everything still be the same and, and, the, and um, Israel not having gotten attacked and all that stuff. You saw there is no 71 for Israel. All right? There is no 71 in the continued year count in the scriptures. It ends at 70. Does she come back? Are they rebuilding and doing things? Yes. But there's no more mention of her after having first been destroyed in the 70th year. And so for those that, by the way, that have family and friends in Israel, right, that are concerned with family and friends in Israel, let's not forget we know what they can have. We know how they can know to escape. And first of all, we should definitely be sharing Jesus Christ with them and those that even if they can't accept him yet, when they suddenly realize millions upon millions of people have vanished, craziness has taken place. Look, here's their warning for them. We know some are going to realize it and get out because the scriptures tell them to. All right, so those that have family in Israel and in Jerusalem, man, oh man, when they hear that peace and safety deal, you're telling them it's coming and when they hear it, that's when they should get out. Get out of Israel. Get out of Jerusalem when you hear that peace and safety deal. Get out. Go to the mountains. Flee into other countries for safety. Because shortly after is going to be when you're going to need to go anyways. Because it's telling you you're going to see these armies compass about and that you're going to flee. All right? And this will be the beginning when it's compassed about. I believe it'll be during those 40 days. And for everybody in America, whew, get off the coasts. You hear Trump declare and they accept and they make this declaration of the peace and safety. Get off the coasts. If you're a believer in Christ, you know that you've got him in your heart and you're watching, you're praying, you're repentant, right? You're obedient, right? You may not be as worried about it. You might get caught in the destruction, but that's okay. We know where we're going. But for those with family and friends who don't yet know, who don't believe, who refuse to believe, if they, if they want a chance, they better get off the coast, especially the West Coast. All right? It's coming, guys. It is coming, and we are so close. God is good. God is good. How can we put this together without being connected and without these revelations through the Holy Spirit that's working through us, right? Guys, I, I can't figure this out if I'm on my own. Are you kidding me? This is crazy. Look at these connections. Old to new, beginning to end, right from Revelation, going into Leviticus. and I mean, come on. It happens on this channel day after week after week after week after week. There's a message getting across that the time is now. When we hear peace and safety, get ready to go. Get ready to let your family and friends know, get out. Come to Jesus Christ, believe in, and if they still refuse, their blood is not on your hands. But guess what? I always remember this, I say it regularly, that when these things shall come to pass, they might know and believe because it was told them before it happened so that when it happens, they might believe. All right, guys. I love you. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon.